Hi boys and girls, it's Mystic Man here. The story that I chose to read to you for this VLN 2020 is the true story of the three little pigs. Now, I'm pretty sure we're all familiar or at some point have heard the story of the three little pigs, right? You know, the three little pigs, they all built their, built their houses out of different things and the big bad wolf came and blew their houses down, knocked them down, just tried to get them, right? We're all familiar with it. But this one is told from the wolf's point of view. So we get to see his side of the story because all you ever hear is that he was bad and that he tried to get the pigs and that's the only side that we've ever really heard it from. So this is the wolf's point of view. So now we get to hear his side of the story. So as I'm reading, kind of see if you can remember anything from the original story compared to this one. So there's some similarities, some similarities and some differences. It's just kind of fun. Okay. So the true story of the little three little pigs by A. Wolf. Yeah, sorry. Goodness gracious. Okay. So everybody knows the story of the three little pigs. Or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story. Because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. I'm Wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me out. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. It's not my fault wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks, you think you were big and bad too. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. Interesting. This is the real story. Let's see what you got, Alexander Wolf. Way back in Once Upon a Time land, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold. I ran out of sugar. Now you're making a cake, you run out of sugar. Seems reasonable. So, I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now, this neighbor is a pig, and he wasn't too bright either. He built his house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build their house out of straw? So, of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into someone else's house, so I called, Little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. That's when my nose started to itch. I felt a sneeze coming on while I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed a great sneeze. And you know what? The whole darn straw house fell down and right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig. Dead as a doornail. He had been there the whole time. It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw. So I ate it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger lying there. I was feeling a little better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar. So I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not by much. He had built his house of sticks. I ring the doorbell on the house, on the stick house. Nobody answered. I call, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back, go away, wolf, you can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. I grabbed the doorknob when I'd suddenly felt another sneeze coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I tried to cover a mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. And you're not going to believe it, but this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. When the dust cleared, there was the second pig, dead as a doornail. Wolf's honor. <laughs> now, you know, food will spoil if you just leave it out there in the open. So I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full. But my cold was feeling a little better. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. 
This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family because why? He had built his house out of bricks. I knocked on the brick house. No answer. Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, wolf. Don't bother me again. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar. And he wouldn't even give me one little cup for my dear old sweet granny's birthday cake. What a pig. I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake when I felt my cold coming on. I huffed. And I snuffed. And I sneezed once again. Then the third little pig yelled, and your old granny can sit on a pin. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Now, I'm usually a pretty calm fellow. But when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. When the cops drove up, of course I was trying to break down the pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. See how he, how it's told from his perspective? He said, you know, when the cops drove up and seen him, he was huffing and puffing and looking like a crazy wolf out there. Do you believe it? The rest, as they say, is history. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for dinner. They figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all that huff and puff and blow your house down. And they made me... The Big Bad Wolf. That's it. The real story. I was framed. But maybe could you loan me a cup of sugar? The end. So, what did you guys think? So after hearing the wolf's point of view, compared to the story of the three little pigs, what do you think? Do you think he really was just trying to make his sweet old grandma a birthday cake and he just needed some cups of sugar? And he had a sneeze and a cold, and that's how the houses got knocked down? What do you think?